cool you, will change your story, will elevate your brand, will brand fire of this Welcome to Kingdom Leaders Global Alliance. Join us as we build saints to become voices, visionaries, and vessels of God's kingdom. God bless you. Children, praise the Lord. Children, praise the Lord. Children, praise the Lord. I'm so happy to be here. I'm happy to see each and every one of you. And you know, before I came here, Jesus was telling me lots of things. And I'm happy to see that you are the ones that he wants to bless today. Praise the Lord. I'm happy to see that you are the ones. That's nice. So it's, oh, this is the person God Jesus was talking about. This is the person Jesus wants to bless. Jesus is here to bless you today. Praise the Lord. So before I start, I want to appreciate... DDK, I want to thank her for this great opportunity. I'm very grateful, ma. I, I just ministered in Abuja amongst my children, teenagers. So this is like my first time of coming to preach outside of my environment. So I'm very grateful for the opportunity. I don't take it for granted. I'm very grateful, ma. Thank you, ma. Thanks for this opportunity. God bless you, ma. I also want to thank God for my husband. And I really am a woman under authority. I'm married. And I have four children. So, and so I had to leave. In fact, my last one is a year and a half. So I had to leave him at home with my caregiver. So I want to thank everybody that has given me the opportunity. My husband has released me to be here. And the girls that take, help me with the home, I also want to thank everybody for that opportunity, for that grace and help. I say thank you in Jesus' name. So let's pray. I'm going to pray before we start. Can, we should pray, right? So I'm just going to pray and release some declarations and prayer and saturate this place with the word of God and angels. Are we ready? Okay, let's pray. In Jesus' name. Everlasting Father, King of glory, Lord of Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this day. This is the day that you have made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. Jesus, this is your desire. This is what you've wanted. This is what you, your heart had yearned for, craved for intimacy with these children. Jesus, this is your time. Jesus, this is your own Kairos moment. This is your moment, Jesus. Let your pleasure, let your heart be satisfied. Let your heart be filled with joy and pleasure. Release, release your angels. Release your power. Release all that, that is in you to give to these children because this is the time. I, the scripture for everything that we learn about salvation Luke 18, 16, the watcher angel watching over the scripture, I release you into the atmosphere in the name of Jesus. When it comes to the time of Holy Ghost baptism, the watcher angel over Acts 2, 39, watcher angel over Joel 2, 28, the watcher angel over Isaiah 44, verse 3, I release you into the atmosphere, do the will of the Lord. Angels, you serve the will of our Father, do the will of the Lord, ye that excel in strength, make sure that that word is fulfilled in our midst in the name of Jesus. When it comes to communion with the Spirit, as these children learn communion, oh, the angel of watching over Isaiah 54 verse 13, the angel watching over Matthew eleven twenty-five 25 that says, you've eaten these things from the wise and prudent and you've revealed it to babes. Our children will be taught of you. Grace will be their peace. Hebrews 8, 10 to 11, he says that from the least to the greatest, they will know me. Lord, these ones will know you even in this place in the name of Jesus. Father, King of glory, oh Lord, even right here, you said they are going to be anointing children intercessors. The watcher angel for Psalm 8 verse 2. Oh Lord, the watcher angel, oh Lord, for Psalm 127 verse 5. Our children will speak with the enemies at the gate. They will silence the avenger. Intercessors are rising. The Lord has shown me that already. Lord, the watcher angels watching over this scripture. Go ye, I release you right now. Watch over that scripture even in this place. Let the word of God be fulfilled in this place. Let the will of our Father, Lord, let his kingdom come in this place, oh Lord. 
Jesus, this is your moment. This is what you wanted. Intimacy with these children and partnership. He said many, many people are trading with the world. You want friends. You want, you want intimacy. You want partners. You want children that you can pour your heart on. Jesus, this is your time. It's in your hands. This is your own Kairos moment. Be Lord, be God. Rule and reign in the name of Jesus. We give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. So the, at the end, my goal for this, I'm going to tell a story soon, but the goal for this session is you are going to learn how to be close to Jesus. How to be what? Very close. You guys, you and Jesus, you'll be very, very close. And also you'll partner with him to do great things. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to do a story now. I need four children. A grown-up, somebody like age 13 or 12. One age 13, and age 12. I need somebody that is like 12 years. Is it 12 years old here? Yeah. Okay, please come. Please come. Then any other? A round of applause for him, please. Then I need any other, any other, um, come, once, just come out. So the title of my story is The Joy of King Stallion. The Joy of King Stallion. The Joy of King Stallion. Slides. The Joy of King Stallion. So here goes my story. Are you ready to hear the story? Good. Story, story. Story, story. Once upon a time, there was a king. His name was King Stallion. So this is the king. Your name is King Stallion. Stallion. He was very rich. He had many servants. He had many, so many things. He had gold, silver. He was so rich. He was so what? And he had a son. His name is Prince Stephen. Prince what? What's your name? Steven. Prince Stephen, according to this story, your name is Prince Stephen. One day, King Stallion called Prince Stephen and said to him, Son, I have so much and I want more sons. And Prince Stephen told King Stallion that, Why not marry more wives so you can have more children? And the king said, No. 
He does not want to marry. Now he wants to adopt. Do you know what I mean? Adoption, to adopt something. Then I want to adopt. Prince Stephen now told King Stallion that, don't worry, daddy, king, like, that I will go to the best orphanage home. I will go to the best place to get you beautiful royal blood, beautiful sons. And the king said, no, that's not what I want. I want to go to the land of Porito, the land of... That land is full of dirty, poverty-stricken, illiterate children. The place is... People don't like... That place is a very terrible place to go. And the king said, that's where I want to go to. And Prince Stephen was saying, why? Why do you want to go to that place to get a son? You are king. You can get beautiful, handsome, brilliant sons. Why do you want to go to that place? And the king said, listen, the king said, I have so much to give. I want to bring people that can take what I have. You know, if somebody is, um, if somebody is poor and you give him money, will he collect it? And he if somebody is rich and you give him money, he will also collect it, but the way he will collect it, he will just collect it. I can afford it. But if you give someone that does not have, how will he collect it? Thank you. Thank you. So the king wanted, the king was explaining to his son that I want people that will appreciate what I have because I have so much. So that's how the king now went to the land of Burrito and so won. It's, he said he wanted son. So son is either a girl or a boy. Just understand it like that. So, and he saw this um, child playing with a puddle of rain, a rain puddle, looking so dirty. And the king now called, what is your name? And he said, my name is Richard. Where are your parents? My parents have died. I live on the streets. I sleep under bridges. I eat from dustbins. Yes, that's how poor he was. And so I'm going to be a he for this story. I know what I mean he. I'm just generalizing it. As children of God, both boys and girls, we are sons of God. We are all what? Sons of God, children of God. So the king now asked, I want to adopt you. And she said, why? Why do you want to adopt me? You look like you are a great person. You are a king. Why do you want to adopt? He said, because it is my choice. Because it is my... I want you to shout it because that's where I'm going to. Because it is my... The king said, it is my choice. That's what I want. That's what I want to do. It's my choice. I want to adopt you. And that was how the king took Richard to the palace and called his servant to change him and dress him like a prince. Dress, 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 dress. <laughs> so the so she was Richard was dressed like a beautiful son. So every day, every day, the king will be talking and talking and gisting, gisting with Richard. And be just be gisting with Richard and telling Richard about what is in his heart, what he likes to do, getting, making Richard to know him more and more. One day he called Richard, he said, Richard, do you know that from the north to the west, from, from the north to the east, from the east to the west, they all belong to me. But one day, kings from other countries, kings from other countries came to fight with, there was a war that broke out among kings. And it's a war of sons. It was a war of what? Kings and their sons. That was all the battle was about. But the king had servants. He had servants, but he could not use them because it was a battle of what? Sons. And he did not have plenty of sons. So he lost the what? 
back to, and they took all his what, land. So he told Richard, I want to go and adopt more sons so that we can go back and take this land. And that was why the king, King Stallion, kept going to the land of, who remembers the land? The land of uh, Porito. He kept going there and bringing more children, bringing more sons, until he had a large army of what? Until he had a large army of what? And they went and fought the battle. And they, and they, but it didn't end there. It didn't end there. When you won the one, the, the or when he got all the lands and they won the battle and got all the land, he called all his sons and said, This battle I fought, I didn't fight it for myself. I fought it for you. Now all of you take lands. And he gave all his sons lands. He gave all his sons. He gave all his sons. Praise the Lord. That's the end of my story. <laughs> Do you want it? Do you want the props? Do you want the props? Okay, if you can keep it. If you want it, you can take it. I can make another one. Praise the Lord. So, so, now, that story that I shared. Okay. The title of my um, today's topic is You Are God's Choice. Say, I am God's choice. I am God's choice. Shout it, I am God's choice. I am God's choice. God chose you to be his son. Genesis 1, 28. We were made in God's what? Image and what? Likeness. Can a God be gisting with human being? Can a God be gisting with a human being? Like the, the gods will come. Hey, today, did you see what happened? One trailer was passing, and the man who said, Ah, did you see what happened? My business, my business partner, can they be doing that? It takes a goat and a goat to what? Talk. It takes a sheep and a sheep to what? So it takes God and who? A God to what? Talk. So God made you in his. God made you in his. You can see that. Um, Richard was what? He was in the land of Porito. The king first made him to be a prince. Then they were now what? Gisting. They were now what? Gisting. So, the reason for salvation is so that you can be close to what? The reason why... Okay, so let me explain this. When Adam... The story of Adam... How many of us know the story of Adam? God told Adam that the day you eat of the fruit, you will what? You will what? Did they die? Did they die? Eh? Let me calm down. Let me calm down, please. Those that said that they didn't die, was God lying? How many of you say they didn't die? If you, if you feel that they didn't die, raise up your hands. God said the very day, I don't know the scripture, the very day that you eat of that fruit, you will die. So was God lying? So, that means they died. <laughs> it means they died. Because God cannot lie. So, God said they did not. Now, what is, de what is death? What is death? What is death? What is death? Yes, dear, come. Have life. Hey, Shatala Badosh, what's your name? God bless you. What? Okay, she didn't hear. Come, come, come. I need that correct and I need that answer. Shout it. Where you do have life. Shout it. Where you do have. Where you don't have. Yeah. Where you don't have. Yeah. So that day that day that Adam and Eve ate the fruit, they didn't have the life of God again. As they ate the fruit, they didn't have the life of God again. Can I tell you the proof? Their children, what happened to Cain and Abel? Cain what? Cain killed. But God created Adam and Eve. How is it that their children, that one of their child will kill another child? Something has gone wrong. Something has gone. They didn't have the life of God A. They didn't have the life of God A. Again, they didn't have the life of God again. That is why, let's go John 3 16. For God so loved the, 
that he gave his only, that whoever believes in shall not but have eternal life. That is why John 10.10, 10, who knows John 10.10? 10? Let's quote it, those that know it. The thief has come to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that you may have. Let's quote Romans 6.23. Who knows Romans 6.23? For the wages, say, for the wages of sin is, but the gift of God, God has come to give you His words, His words, His words. Shout it! So, when Jesus came, what Jesus Christ? Jesus did not just come and die for your sins, oh! He did not just come and take your sin nature. When uh, Adam sinned, he now had the life of sin. He had the sin nature, Satan's life. When Adam and Eve sinned, they had the sin nature. So they didn't have the life of God again. And so let me now, let me continue. I, I digress. So God wanted to give man his life so that he can be gisting with you. So that he can be what? Gisting. God wants to be gisting with you and talking with you and telling you things that are important to him. But when Adam sinned, he lost the life of God. But God wanted intimacy. He wanted to be close to man so much. That even when they didn't have the life of God, he was still trying. Enoch, who knows about Enoch in the Bible? He did not see death. God took him. God enjoyed his friendship so much that God what? Took him. Who else was close to, to God in the Bible? Old Testament. Abraham. Clap for yourselves. The scripture says that Abraham was called a friend of God. A friend. He didn't have the life of God though. And God said he is my what? Friend. You know what friend means? Don't you see? Friend, you'll be talking with your friend. Ha, today, my mommy did this. Ha, it happened to you. Hey, you'll be gisting, gisting. So Abraham, so much that God wanted to go and do something in Sodom and Gomorrah. I wanted to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. God said, will I hide what I am doing for my friend Abraham? And he called Abraham. Abraham, me, I also go and do this thing. No. Abraham said, oh, God, now, wait, wait, God, wait, wait. I just didn't want to do. Okay, if you find 50 people, Will you, will you stop it? Because of you, oh, no problem, I'll stop it. I said, wait now, God, ah, wait, wait. And he kept breaking the numbers down until he got to 10. To show you how he was gisting with, interacting with Jesus. Abraham was so close to, to, to God. Sorry, I said just God. Who else was close to God? <laughs> Moses. Okay, let me, say, let me take Moses. Moses, the Bible said that Moses was talking to God face to face as a man would talk to his friend. Can you see how God wanted friends? Can you see that? Even in the New Testament, John the Beloved, the disciple of Jesus, he will rest. We will rest on, who can I, let me just, he will do like this. He will do like this to Jesus. Rest on Jesus' bosom. Rest on Jesus. Do you know you can rest on Jesus' bosom? In your imagination, you can just rest on Jesus' bosom. Praise the Lord. To show you that Jesus wants to be close to you. Jesus wants to be what? Yes. Jesus wants to be close to you. And one of the things, when I was preparing, God said, you say this category, that he's not hiding. He's not what? He wants to be known. He wants to be what? Let's open to Jeremiah 9.24. Jeremiah 9.24. I didn't know that. So, okay, let, let the child read it. Jeremiah 9, 24. But let him who glories glory in this, that he understands and know me, that I am the Lord who practices steadfast love, justice, and righteousness in the earth. For in these th things I delight, says the Lord. Wow. In these things I delight. In these things I what? In these things I what? God wants to be known. God wants you to know him. God wants to tell you what is going on in his heart. If in Nigeria now, what is going on? He wants to tell you, do you know this is what I want to do? Do you know this is what I want to do? God wants to what? God wants you to? God wants you to? God wants you to? God is not hiding. Let me explain something to you. Praise the Lord. God has a need. As a, God has a need. I'm sure you've heard that God does not need anything. Have you heard that before? It's not entirely true. 
is not entirely true on two grounds. The first one, God cannot be man. God cannot, no, let me rephrase that. For God to operate on earth. So, okay, let me first share the first one. The first one is that the love of God. How many of you, when your mommy gives you something, you feel loved? How many of you, when you give your mommy something, you are happy, you feel you love her? So love has two dimensions, two areas. The giving part and the what? Taking part. If, if I say I love you, I, I'm your mommy and I love you, love you, and you're not, I'm not receiving, you're not, you're telling me, you're my, my mom and I'm your child, and you're not giving me anything. Will you feel, will the child feel that the mother loves her? So we want, a mo- also the same thing for the mother. If you, are, you have grown up and you just abandon your mother, you're not even sending, you're not showing any love to her, sending, sending anything to her, we should feel loved. We should feel loved. Even if she's your mother, we should feel loved. So God wants to also receive love. One day, let me give you a gist. Are you listening to my gist? One day, I was reading my Bible. I was in God's presence. And God said something. He said, thank you for making me to know the love of a man. I said, he said, thank you for making me to know the love of a man. So what is what's that? And God explained to me that there is love. There is a love you can give to God. Say, there is a love I can give to God. There is a love that I can give to God. God wants my love. He can be with angels. Angels, they are, they, they are not even wired that way. And, but we human beings, we, we, have, we have the life of God in us, and we can show God love. How, when we lay down our life, when we lay down our will, when we enjoy him, and another level of God's need, when God wanted to die for us, did he come as God? He sent Jesus as a man on earth. God cannot operate on earth without a man. Say that. God cannot operate on earth without a man. So God needs a man on earth. So God needs me. God needs me. When God wanted to save the Israelites, who did he send? Who did he send? When God wanted to preserve a generation from famine, who did he send to Egypt? Who did he send to Egypt? When God wanted to die for us, did he come, did he, did he come as a God? He came as Jesus, as a man, isn't it? So God needs you. You see, it, everything that is happening in the world, it's not God, though, that will come around and change it. Who will change it? Who will change it? Say me. Who will change it? Who will change it? The change that we desire on earth, who will God use? A man. Ezekiel 22, 30 said, I sought for a man. So God needs you. God what? Okay, all right. Um, come, 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 please come forward. I want this man of God to, to read out a communion with God. I'm going to teach us, every child here, by the grace of God. But I want you to see that it's not just me. Because I'm an adult. You will say, auntie is an adult. Auntie is an adult. By the grace of God, this is because of time. Okay, just sit down. Don't, don't, don't join me. My name is Karis Akinwalere. Okay, this is Karis Akinwalere. How old are you? Nine. Nine years old. At age four, she gave her life to Christ and was filled with the Holy Spirit. If you are four years old, yeah, raise up your hands. <laughs> this girl here, she was saved and filled with the Holy Spirit at age four. And whenever she reads the Bible, I will tell her, whatever you learn, is God talking to you? Yeah. Whatever you learn, is God what? Whatever you learn from the scripture, it's not I learned that, no. Whatever you learn, is God talking to? Because the word is Jesus. He is, yes. the, his word, if you see Jesus, what will you do? If you see Jesus now, what will you do? You will ask him, yes. what will you do? What else? What will you do? Eh? You will bow. Good. If you see Jesus, what else will you do? You, you lie down on the floor. If you see Jesus, what will you do? Eh? You praise him. Do you know that this word is Jesus? This word is what? 
the word became flesh. This is Jesus is the word. John 1:1. 1, 1, let's cut this. Who knows John 1:1? 1, 1? 1, 2, 3, go. In the beginning was the and the word was with. And the word and the word was. And the word became flesh. John 1:14. So this is Jesus is the word. So anything, anytime you spend time with the word of God, whatever you learn, he's, he's Jesus. I'm going to go into that. I'm just teaching for now. Praise the Lord. So, okay. Now you want to start from, just read like four pages. Okay, so, I, so whatever she, she will learn, whatever she learns, she'll write it down. And she'll now begin to ask questions. She'll now begin to what? Ask questions. After she has learned something, she will not ask questions. So I want her to just quickly, these are John now. I want her to just quickly share. So say the date, the scripture. Just read it quickly. Yeah, so yeah, stop here. Yeah, let's stop. On, on, 11, on 11th of May, 2023. On 11th of May, 2023, I read Matthew 25 to Mark 2. Ma, I learned from Matthew 25 that I should be kind to others. Matthew 26, I should pray always. Matthew 27, I should, o- go, I should always say the truth. Matthew 28, I should preach the gospel. Mark 1, healing is from God. And Mark to God, Jesus came to preach to sinners. I, I told God that I want to become an intercessor. Then he said that yeah, if I want to become an intercessor, I must pray without season. And I should, not, I should pray so I will not make my spirit weak. I said that I'll, I'll pray always. I, and he said that I should always, I should do it, I should really do it to become an intercessor. And then um, on 12th of May, 2023, I read Mark 3 to 8. Mark 3, do good deeds on Sabbath. Mark 4, don't be afraid. Mark 5, God can raise people to life. Mark 6, God is omnipotent. Mark 7, your words are powerful. And Mark 8, Jesus is God's son. Me, um, how do I, I told God that how do I stop fear? He said that I should use the Bible. You know, I, he told me so that anytime I am afraid, my tummy used to hurt me. And, and then because, the, he said that's because of I'm allowing fear to overwhelm me. And it's anytime I sense fear, I should rebuke it. On 13th of May, 2023, I read Mark 5, 9 to 14. Mark 9, we should stop sinning. God told me in Mark 9, we should stop sinning. Mark 10, children are blessed. Mark 11, praise, I should praise God always. Mark 12, I should give everything you have to God. Mark 13, the end time is near, so you should be ready. Mark 14, pray always. Then I ask God, am I blessed? God said, God said yes. You should start making confessions for yourself. They work a lot. Whatever you say can help, can happen. I said that I should always be making good confessions. Now the last one, I, 14th of May 2023, I read Mark 15 to look for. Mark 15, be brave. Mark 16, I should preach the gospel. Luke 1, believe in what God says. Look to do what God has sent you to do. Look to God, Jesus is baptized with fire and the Holy Spirit. And look for we are chosen by God. I told God that I am that I am God's chosen. I'll do whatever I want me to do on earth. Then God said, I chose you to be my chosen one. You are going to change the, the world negative things. Your purpose on earth is great. Your calling is great. And also, will your calling be great in Jesus' name? Amen. I have a question to ask. I have a question to ask. How, how do you hear God? How, how do you hear God? When I hear, I hear God by my, my thought. And how I know it's God because of, it's either it's from his word and his words are righteous. And also, he tells me things I don't know. So it's, praise the Lord. The first time she came to meet me and said today when she was doing her devotion, she asked God that was, she was reading Ezekiel. And she asked God, God, what's the difference between disobedience and rebellion? And she, I, I screenshotted and he told her, she told me that God said, rebellion is when you don't obey, you go against an authority. 
and disobedience is when you don't do what you're told to do, but rebellion when you go against an authority. Immediately she said that, I said, God, they talk. God, I did not teach this girl. <laughs> I didn't teach this girl this thing. I didn't teach her. I didn't teach her. And that was why. And I asked her, come, how do you hear? I said, these are thoughts. My, and me, that's how we as even adults. God just talks through our thought. I said, he says it's our thought, but she does know that it's not, it's not her because she's in the world. So he's teaching her from the word. Number two is a righteous word. It's what she's hearing is righteous. And, and lastly, she didn't know these things before. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I share that to let everybody know here that you can, God wants to talk to you. And do you know why God wants to talk to you? Children, you have a gift we don't have. Children, you have a gift we don't. I'm telling you. Even the scripture says that we as adults, we must become like you people. We must become like children. We must become like what? Your faith level is, is, is amazing. You don't doubt. You just believe. Children say, I have an amazing faith. I have an amazing faith. The scripture says that those that are pure will see those that appear in hearts will see God. Even your angels, they are building God. Our hearts, we adult, we have to be pressing this one, this contamination. But your heart is like a mirror, easily reflecting the spirit realm. So you can easily hear God. You can easily what? You can easily what? Hear God. You are grace, the gift of God. You carry the gift of God. Praise the Lord. So we're going to go to the next session, which is like a practical session. Praise the Lord. Okay, let me just read out some things from my slide here. What happens, how to become a friend of God? You receive the life of God. You receive the fullness. Okay, you receive the fullness of God's spirit. You spend time gisting and sharing and listening to Jesus. You do what he tells you to do. And friends like, like, friends like telling others about their friends. So you tell others about Jesus. Praise the Lord. So they're going to do four things in this place. Are we ready? First of all, we are going to go through a, 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 some, how many more minutes do I have? 15 for teaching. For the talk, for what? Is it long? Okay, let's just continue. Um, we are going to go through this session of salvation, Holy Ghost baptism. Then we are going to spend time with the Word. How many of you want to be friends with Jesus? You want to be Jesus' friend? You want him to tell you things. God, 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 can, God can smile. You know that. Can God smile? Can God cry? Yes, God can cry. If you can cry, then God can cry because you are made in his words. You are made in his words. Image. Can God laugh? Psalm 2 says, he who sits in heaven laugh. Can God dance? God can dance. Scripture says that, Jesus, that he dances over you. He's dancing. He say, hey, see my DDK. Oh. Hey, see my... What's your name? Okay, she's your daughter. I can see the resemblance. See, Kito, oh. God can be dancing over you. God can be what? Dancing over you. God has... God is like you. God is like what? You. So he wants you to relate with him that way. Don't just see him as God in heaven. No, God is in heaven. Mm, let me just stay here. No, God is inside your heart. Praise the Lord. Okay. So firstly, I said that when a baby is born, does it come in the life of God? When a baby is born, does the baby have the life of God? <laughs> okay, praise the Lord. The baby does not have the life of God. The baby does not have the life of because the Bible says that all have seen and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 3:23. Everyone that comes from the lineage of Adam has the seen nature. Has the seen Everybody everybody that, that came from Did you come from Adam? Did you come from Adam? Where did you come from? I said, no, I'm coming. Where did you come from? Ah, uh, no, not yet. <laughs> I like you. You've not come from Jesus yet, though. 
until you give your life to God, until you receive the life of God. But as a baby, as a baby, as a what? Baby. That baby is still coming from who? From Adam. From where? Adam. So the baby has the sin nature. There has to be a time in your life where you say, Jesus, I receive your life. There has to be a time in your life where you say what? I receive your life. It falls. There has to be a time. If you've not said this, you still have the sin nature. You still have the words. If you've not received the life of God into your heart, you still have the sin. You still have the sin. Nature. Praise the Lord. So I need, I need to connect to the children. That's why I'm going so they can. So there has to be a point in, my, in your life where you say, Jesus, I receive your words. I receive your, your life. I explained that to you that we lost the life in the Garden of Eden. And Jesus came to give us what? Jesus came to take away our sin nature and give us. Shout it. Shout it and give us words. And give us words. How many of you want the life of God? How many of you want the life of God? How many of you want the life of God? I want you to, I want you to, to um, say these words after me. Lord Jesus, are we ready? I people are making noise. I don't think we are ready. Are we ready? Age four and five. Are you ready? Are you ready? I, I came for you. This is the beginning. Are you ready? Are you ready? Do you want the life of God? You have to choose. It's a choice. There's life of Satan, the sin nature. There's life of God. Which one do you want? Life of God or life of Satan, the sin nature. Which one do you want? I want you to shout, let Jesus hear. Which one do you want? Which one do you want? I want you to know that it is a choice. Nobody is forcing you. Nobody is what? Nobody is what? How many of you make choices? You make choices, right? So you can choose. You can say, see, I don't think I want this Jesus. I want to be bad. You can make that choice. Do you, do you understand that? Do you know you can make that choice? Eh? You don't want. <laughs> That's good. That's what I'm driving at. That you must want the life of God. Praise the Lord. So let's say this prayer. Are we... Let's close our eyes. Let's close our eyes so that just for concentration, so that we can concentrate. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner because I have the sin nature. Because I have the sin, I was born with the sin nature. But I believe that you died on the cross that I may have the life of God you didn't only die with my sin nature you rose with the life of God you died with my sin nature and you rose with the life of God Lord Jesus I receive your life I receive Zoe. I receive the life of God into my spirit. I receive the life of God. Shout it. I receive the life of God into my spirit. I receive the life of God into my spirit. Jesus, I turn away from my own ways. I accept your life. I accept your ways. I declare that I have your nature. I want your nature, Jesus. I don't want Satan's nature. I don't want sin nature. I want you, Jesus. Shout it. 
Jesus, it is you that I choose. Jesus, it is you that I want. I receive you into my spirit. Lay your hands here and say, Jesus, I receive you into my spirit. Jesus, it is you that I want. It is your life that I want, Jesus. I choose you. I can make a choice. And it is you that I choose. I decree that I have the life of God. I decree that I have the life of God. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Thank you for listening. We are sure you have been tremendously blessed. To connect with Kingdom Leaders Global Alliance, please visit our website, www.kingdomleadersglobal.org. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Kingdom Leaders Global Alliance, for our video resources. And follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Kingdom Leaders Global. God bless you.